like to call the Citizens Board of Review for the City of Sheboygan into session. Um, if we could stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like the uh, members of the board to introduce themselves. Dave, would you start? Uh, David Inzi. Kenneth King, Chair. Andy Ross. And if we could have the city assessor introduce themselves, please. Darcy Excuse me, a little louder. Just a reminder that everybody should always use the mic for everything because we are on and, and so in order to do public meetings, we've got to speak into the mic so people can hear us. So anytime you say a word, speak into a red colored mic. Darcy Biernink. Ray Ann Schmitz. Michael Groda, Assessor. Chuck Adams, City Attorney. Okay, those are all present, including the Meredith, who is the clerk. We'd like to uh, approve the minutes from the June Ninth meeting, available on the screen. I would entertain a motion for approval. So move. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. For the same <laughs> sign. We have before us the two policies um, referenced. The first policy is um, procedure for waiver of board of review hearing and requests. Upon review, I would uh, request the motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. Second. All right. Um, all those in favor, oh, signal. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, we discussed this at the last. We discussed this at the last meeting, and we ask that there's some revisions and I'm just asking the city attorney were those added yes so uh, primarily uh, primary substantive changes uh, have to do with uh, the idea that we're going to have different kinds of you know it's not just telephone testimony that there are others uh, and so including in your criteria not only uh, the ability um, to use those technologies, but also uh, a preference for virtual video testimony so that you can see documents, so that you can see people. So that, that was added into uh, actually both of those policies. So we are having actual film videos? You may. It's always still your choice. Um. We, we talked about uh, swearing in of those people, and uh, is that still going to be uh, included? Yes, you'll, you'll still be able to swear people in. All that, all the legal sort of technicalities are covered, and that's part of the criteria as well. Uh, the, it's designed to be fairly flexible so that people can, you know, if technology changes or people have specific needs, you can consider it, but it is also designed to leave you with the primary decision as to whether the process that, that is in place uh, is appropriate. So you can always say no. Very good. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor as presented. The document as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Uh, the second procedure that we need to uh, look at and approve is the uh, sworn telephone and sworn written testimony. 
request. Uh, that procedure is outlined on page two of the documents provided to you today. Um, after your review, I would in, entertain a motion for approval of that policy. I, I so move. Motion, second. Second. Se motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same side. It passes. Um, we request uh, qualifications of the assessor's office. Chuck, do these need to be read into the record or can we accept them as presented to the board? <laughs> almost broke my own rule. Um, yeah, you can simply accept them and then they would come in as, a, as an exhibit to the minutes. Thank you. Okay, let it be noted that we have received the uh, qualifications uh, of Darcy, Rayanne, and Michael um, as required. We, I would entertain a motion to accept these qualifications as part of the record. A motion. And second. A motion and second to accept. They are accepted. Would now like to ask the assessor to uh, review the assessment role and give us an overview. Sure. Uh, first, I've got the assessor's affidavit that's signed and dated today. I'll present to the clerk. Uh, the assessment role presented today uh, stands at a total valuation for locally assessed real estate at $2,412,706,100. Uh, looking at the summary of change uh, listing starting in the right or left hand side, excuse me, bottom, the Board of Review last year uh, adjourned with a total valuation of $2 billion $345,689,800. Um, and then working right on this form shows the, the changes that were made during the uh, assessment process in the last year. Uh, we had uh, decreases due to revaluation or reconsideration of $8,000,000. Three hundred and sixty-three thousand five hundred. Uh, we had property uh, that went from assessable to exempt, totaling two million eighty-one thousand two hundred dollars. <throat> we had property that was removed or destroyed at four hundred and fifty-eight thousand nine hundred dollars. Uh, we did have uh, a small gain by annexation, $217,800. And then uh, new construction uh, totaling $65,029,300. Property onto the assessment roll from exempt uh, totaling $1,772,700.
and then property increased due to a revaluation or reconsideration, $10,017,100. Uh, reaching the total being presented today of $2,412,706,100. Uh, just a, a brief summary um, you know, of the, the board review um, you know, or leading up to the board of review, it was approximately a $70,379,000 gain in assessed value for uh, real and personal property. Uh, projected ratio is at 88%. Uh, ge the general notices of assessment were mailed on May 4th. Uh, there was uh, an additional uh, mailing uh, that took place um, for about a dozen properties uh, that took place on June 30th. And as far as uh, open book, uh, there were uh, 52 amended notices. Uh, most of those were for a partial um, uh, condominium project where there was reconsideration given after reviewing their annual, uh, exact costs. Um, uh, the affid assessor's affidavit has been signed and uh, all required reports uh, have uh, to the Department of Revenue have been uh, sent in a timely fashion. Uh, I'm open if there's any questions. What was the annexation that took place? Uh, it looks like that was a residential property, approximately two acres, with uh, with a house. And that was uh, what was the total on that value? Two hundred and seventeen thousand eight hundred. Oh, okay, excuse me. Just a residential building. It was. Thank you. Any other questions of the board, the assessor, and the assessment role? If not, I would entertain a motion to accept the role as presented. So moved. Motion second. Motion and second to approve the rule as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Rule is accepted as presented. Are there any other, uh, any waivers? Um, I believe the board has uh, been requested to approve uh, two waivers. And then we do have a filing uh, for an objection to be heard. Um, I'm going to ask this board, uh, and I'm not sure if now is the appropriate time that uh, uh, a waiver be requested for Festival Foods, who is the third applicant that was filing for board review hearing. Okay, so the request uh, is... Uh, so we, we don't want you to take uh, action on those uh, waivers yet, though. Uh, you need to make your your motion first. Would this be the appropriate time? Yes. Yes. Um, I, I would like to request uh, for the all three of the properties um, that are uh, would be seeking or would be requesting a waiver from Board of Review uh, that the uh, Board of Review uh, would issue a subpoena for requested records. And the reason for the subpoena is to get information that would only be attained you know, through litigation and deep into the litigation. And um, I think that that is of benefit to uh, the city, the Board of Review, and to the assessor to get that information promptly. And we cannot do that after a waiver has been approved. 
the subpoena needs to be issued and, and complied with prior to that waiver being approved. And what the, I, I think the benefit is going to be to find out, again, information we wouldn't get until deep into litigation, whether uh, the uh, property owner or their agent has sufficient inf information to overcome the presumption of correctness in the assessment. Um, and, um, you know, if there is that uh, presumption uh, or detailed lease information that uh, uh, isn't apparent now, uh, that it's going to help uh, the border review in the city in the long run. A question for the city attorney. Uh, there has not been an objection filed on this property. Is that correct? So there, well, there's been an objection filed on each of the three, right? To the best of my knowledge, yeah. I, I believe there has been on each of the three. And so what's happening here is that there were two of the three that filed for waivers themselves. And there's one of the three for which the assessor has filed for the waiver. Um, but before acting on them, he's made a motion and the state statute number is 70.47 uh, sub eight sub D. Uh, and it does indicate that the board of review shall, uh, upon request of the assessor, and he's made that request, shall compel the attendance of witnesses, uh, accept objectors, <clears throat> and then this is the important part, and the production of all books, inventories, appraisals, documents, and other data, which may throw light on the value of the property. So in essence, when the assessor comes and makes that motion of you, you actually have no choice under the statute but to accept that uh, uh, motion. And so in essence, what will happen is, um, as you know, I represent you today. I don't represent the assessor. Uh, the assessor uh, has hired uh, an attorney, uh, Amy Seibel, and uh, she did inform me of the basis for the motion. Uh, Ms. Seibel will be preparing uh, subpoenas um, that will go out uh, the, each of these three uh, applicants have filed um, documents that allow them to, to just simply serve the subpoenas by mail, uh, but she's indicated that she needs five to six weeks uh, to compel that information. That information then will be available to you when you hear the hearings or waive the hearings. Uh, likely the hearings will simply be waived because of the requests, uh, and then they will you know, they'll move on in the process, but the assessor will have that uh, information. As such, the proper motion um, by you would simply be to pursuant to 70.47 sub 8 sub D and pursuant to the request of the assessor to compel the production of all books, inventories, appraisals, documents, and other data which may throw light upon the value of the property with regard to each of the three objections. Do I have such a motion? So moved. Motion second. Motion and second to approve the request per Wisconsin statute. Which? All those in favor? Yes. Uh, which one? is the uh, one that we're requesting legal action on? It's actually all three. It's, it's to get subpoena on each of the three objectors. Okay, we received a, re a copy of the request for two. The third one is? Uh, it is the uh, um, Sheboy it's known as Sheboygan Fest or Festival Foods oh, is okay. the third. Okay. that the assessor is requesting, um, yeah, uh, potentially requesting a waiver. Thank you. That motion has uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All right. All right, motion is uh, passed. Any other waivers or requests? 
If not, I would ask the clerk for a schedule of today's objections. Okay, there are none. Um, as a result, we need to go into recess. Yes, so what you'll need to do now is go into recess and come back two hours after uh, you started the meeting. Okay, uh, that will allow return. any other objections to be filed within a reasonable time as agreed to and published uh, publicly as required by state statute. This time we will stand in recess and reconvene at, at 10 o'clock. I'd like to reconvene the Citizens Board of Review of the City of Sheboygan. Uh, request uh, the clerk, has there been any additional objections filed? No, there's not. Okay, having no additional objections, um, I would like to entertain a motion to adjourn to a future date to be determined uh, based on the waivers we presently uh, have under review. So moved. Motion, second. Motion and second. We will stand adjourned until a future date uh, to be determined as a result of the waivers. Having no other business, we will adjourn like at this time.